Good evening and welcome to this installment of your award-winning Wem City Lecture Series. Yay! Now news. Uh, so, as I'm sure we've all been following the news and current events and such, we know that Jurassic World will be coming out soon. Uh, the first footage was just leaked this week. And, um, and this calls to mind the two most important things to the modern world, genetics and dinosaurs. Uh, so, Kevin's been, been bugging me for a while that he wanted to do another lecture on genes. And, uh, and I accept it because Kevin, as you can clearly see right now, is such a well-dressed man. <laughs> He's always put together just beautiful ensembles. Uh, some might even say it's his best trait, is how well he can dress. And so I, I was very eager to find out whether it was going to be Jordash or Bugle Boys. <laughs> uh, so here to tell us is Mr. Kevin. Oh, also I wanted to, to apologize for spelling Kevin's name wrong and then when he corrected me, thinking that he was joking. <laughs> I just don't trust anything that Kevin says. <laughs> so here to give you a lecture about facts that are true is Kevin Blackstone. Pardon. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the audience. On. All right, get my fabulous flares. Anyway, I'm talking about genomics or genetics or genes. What is the genome? It's all the DNA and all the genes that you got. You got a lot of them. There's, that's, that's, that's your genome. So what's DNA? I'll do chromosomes. Uh, it makes proteins, um, except when it doesn't uh, get spread into RNA, except when it isn't. Um, the RNA makes proteins, but sometimes it doesn't do that. Um, it's usually a double-stranded helix, but sometimes it's not that, um, because sometimes it's a quadruple-stranded helix. Um, it's four bases, but sometimes actually it's five, um, also six. Um, <laughs> Oh, and each base is paired with another, um, uh, A's are paired with T's and C's are paired with G's. Uh, there's, that's, that's pretty consistent. Oh, and uh, the human genome is 3.5 billion of those pairs. So, what is the structure of DNA? It looks kind of like that. Uh, so you've got your thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. The, G, the guanines, G, C, 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 T, A, etc. Those are the bonds that they tend to do. And then all those add up into this here ever popular double helical structure that we all know, which is exactly what DNA looks like all the time, except that it also looks like that, where it coils around these things that are called histones. But then actually it looks like that, where it just sort of makes this mess. It might be on a scaffold, but no one really knows. Um, on a scaffold. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it coils up onto this thing, and then that coils onto that thing, and then it does these loops. And uh, no one's really sure if there's a scaffold there or what it would be made of, but it might be there. Um, but here's a breakdown of uh, the general size of what I was just talking about. So you've got a double helix, that winds around histones, those histones tightly pack into coils, which then loop, and then you've got a chromosome. And then you've got 22 of those. Uh, Connor, yes? Can you talk more about the way the histones? Histones will be covered later in the lecture. Oh, far out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are your chromosomes, or maybe not your chromosomes. Um, maybe not even human chromosomes. It was the first thing on Google to search for chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> you got 22 of them, uh, or which each pair up with one maternal, one paternal, so 44 total. And then you've either got two X's or an X and a Y. And a Y is actually just like uh, evolutionarily depleted.
completed X that got screwed up somewhere, and now it can't be combined with X's. I'll talk about recombination later. Um, chromosomes are not consistent across species. So this is a fox. Uh, fox. This is a particular fox. Fox can have between 70, 80. They've got 15 normal-ish chromosomes that are about the size of ours, and then they've got like between 30 and 70 little crappy chromosomes that may or may not do anything, but people don't really know that. And it depends on the fox as how many of those there are. Uh, birds. Birds have a bunch of chromosomes. Also, um, they have a reverse situation, whereas Females have two X's, and males have an X and a Y. With birds, it's sort of the reverse, only they're called Z and W. And uh, males have two of the same, and then females have one of one and one of the other. Uh, and then you've got the platypus that has uh, five different X's and like four diff five different Y's, and a whole mess of different these shapes and size chromosomes that I don't even know how the fuck it works. Oh, uh, DNA structure might also be a fractal ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, you might, as you might expect, uh, the genomic size increases with the complexity of the organism, except that's brazenly wrong. Actually, uh, mammals are just edging out uh, echinoderms back here, which includes starfish. Um, uh, amphibians are kicking our asses and are flowering plants. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what happens to DNA? There's several things that happen to DNA for us to get all the uh, benefits out of it. One is that duplicates. You need cells to duplicate. You need to make babies. Uh, you want to need to split your DNA in two and make uh, replicates of it. Uh, the, this is done partly with DNA helicase, which leads to the ever popular, um, if I were an enzyme, I'd be DNA helicase so I can unzip your genes. <laughs> um, and then there's a bunch of other ligases and primers and other shit that I'm not going to go into right now. So it duplicates. Necessary. Um, it's constantly getting damaged. It needs to repair itself. It does so like this. It takes out a chunk uh, around, the, uh, around the damaged area, puts a new chunk in. Sometimes it does that wrong. Recombination. Uh, this is so when you, you're getting the chromosomes, you're not just getting the one from your mother and the one from your father. I mean, yes, you are, but the two that your mother or father had are getting together and shifting all their DNA between each other before one of them goes on to you. So you're actually getting a mix of your parents' two, no matter which one or whatever you're getting. OK, and then the, uh, the big guns here, basically, it gets transcribed into RNA. So this is the first step when you're getting your proteins. Uh, GTAC becomes GUAC because the T becomes uracil. Uh, this happens in two directions. So everything's getting unzipped apart here. RNA is getting transcribed onto this strand. However, this can also be happening in the reverse direction. So everything that's coded in one direction, there's a reversed version of each of those nucleotides, each of these little letters in DNA is a nucleotide, by the way. Uh, there's going to be a reverse one that can also happen with a completely different coding sequence because of that. Um, so what's RNA? Uh, it's the stuff that becomes proteins. It's also all this other shit. Um, there's a ton of different RNAs. I'm not going to do them, but I'll many of them. Uh, what does RNA do? Uh, well, it falls into these structures, which is basically like a somewhat like DNA structures. It just mm -hmm folds over on itself and makes little loops, it twists, it, it's easily represented in a 2D fashion um, that looks like that. All right, so, we've got these RNAs. You know that uh, some of them are going to become genes here. What, what, what's, what's a gene? Uh, that depends entirely on who you ask. Um, it could just be proteins. That was the original definition back in the 60s. Um, any RNA that has any function in the cell that can cause anything to happen, some people call that a gene. Um, that's generally, proteins and functional RNAs are the general de facto rough definition of genes these days. Um, 
Although, when there was a paper recently that came out that said it found functions in 90% of the genome, basically the way they found that <coughs> is that they changed the definition of gene and were just like, well, anything that becomes transcribed or RNA or shows up anywhere in any cell, whether or not we can prove it does a goddamn thing. Um, but based on the most popular definition, we got around 45,000 to 60,000. When they were first doing the Human Genome Project, I think they were expecting to find about 200,000. Um, they were excited to be wrong. Because <laughs> um, science. All right. 